My name is Herb Nadell. I'm living the American dream. I really live the American dream. I've been able to travel all over the world. I have a beautiful home and a wonderful family. And why do I say that? Because uh, I come from a family where my father wasn't terribly productive, a uh, rather troublesome fellow, and uh, we didn't have much. So the fact that I was able to get an education uh, at LA Trade Tech with almost no money uh, to support myself during the course of my going to school is really remarkable and something for which I'm grateful and very proud. When I was a young kid, my father, who was working as a house painter, uh, took me to an architect's house. I was only nine years old. And um, I, I was very curious as to what the architect was doing. I, I saw drawing boards. And at, at that point in my life, at nine years of age, I thought that houses were, were built somehow by carpenters. It never occurred to me that there were drawings. And this architect showed me the drawings. And I was terribly inspired, so excited to think that somehow these drawings translated themselves into architecture. When I was 13 years old, I met another architect by the name of uh, Calvin Straub. Calvin Straub asked me on the job site to do a sketch of the building since my father told him I wanted to be an architect. So I did a sketch of the end of the building, and as a child I could draw very well. I had asthma as a kid, I couldn't go out and play. I was the last kid they picked for a, the baseball team or the football team because I was kind of sickly. But I, so I stayed home and I learned to draw. I drew the end of that building, and Calvin Straub, who was a very elegant looking gentleman, bald, tall, beautiful clothes, looked down at me, and he said, someday you're gonna be a great architect. The fact that I had a sister that was uh, very ill, she had a brain tumor from the time she was six or seven years of age. My parents were struggling to keep her alive. Uh, it caused my father emotional grief. So I was kind of ignored and not pushed. And so in school, I, I didn't do very well. But I did work. I always had a job. I supported myself, not completely because I did live at home, but it, uh, it, I wanted a car. I had to buy that car myself. I, I worked part-time, uh, hanging window screens, uh, doing all kinds of odd jobs in order to get the things I wanted, including buying some of my own clothes because there simply wasn't money in my household uh, I mean, we lived below the poverty line. I barely graduated high school. I had to beg my way out of high school. I just wasn't very good at academics. I went to Santa Monica City College. I enrolled there thinking that I'd start my career over again and I'd, I'd get my act together. But again, I, I failed. I, I just, I didn't do very well in school. And within one semester, I was asked to leave because I, I just wasn't paying attention. I was misdirected. And I'm not altogether sure what the psychology is at that point in my life, what the psychology was at that point in my life. I was just irresponsible and not motivated. I then had uh, the presence of mind to join the U.S. Coast Guard. Within a few days of joining the Coast Guard, uh, I experienced incredible anti-Semitism, a form of racism that mostly you only hear about that occurred in Nazi Germany. Uh, it was uh, a life-changing experience. Uh, I was in boot camp for three months. I then was put on a Coast Guard cutter in Seattle, Washington, and I thought, I'm out of boot camp. I'm away from those crazy people. And when I got on the ship, the bolson's mate who was in charge of the recruits that had been assigned to the ship, said, where's Nadell? What they did to me while I was on board that ship for three months was unbelievable. 
They had me working 18 hour days. I ran the laundry and then I also stood a three hour watch working 18 or 20 hours a day and they wouldn't let up on me. An officer threatened me one day, so I told him off, which you don't do. So they had a captain's mast and the captain of the ship said to me, he said, how dare you talk to an officer? And I said, am I not allowed to defend myself? It didn't make any difference. They put me in the brig. And there was no one left to do the laundry. So they had to take me out of the jail and put me back doing the laundry, but they didn't let up on me. When I got out of the Coast Guard, I was a mature adult. I had no family to rely on. There wasn't much support there. And the same friend who recommended the Coast Guard to me recommended LA Trade and Tech. And he said, you know, you can become a draftsman and you can work in an architectural firm. So I drove down to the school and they wanted my high school records, all of which was easy to get. They were very skeptical about my ability to get myself through school. And I said, I really want to be a draftsman. They let me into LA Trade Tech on probation. It cost $11. I paid that $11 and I had no gas in my car. I went to the gas station and I told the guy I only had 25 cents and gas was 29 cents a gallon. So I was able to buy almost a full gallon of gas. And the guy said to me, you're gonna pump your own gas. You go over one penny over that 25 cents and I'm gonna hit you over the head with that nozzle. When I went to Trade Tech, the teachers really took an interest in the students, not just me, but every one of them. Um, I'm very touched by it. I really am. Can you stop that? Yes. I was very inspired by the teachers, particularly Mr. Horie, who was of Japanese descent, and he was part of a firm called Cashon Horie, and they did wonderful architecture. They paid attention to what I was doing. They showed interest. They coached me. I finished in a year and a half rather than two years. I like to say to younger people, you get out of things what you put in. I put everything in that school. Mr. Horier said to me, you gotta go to SC. Don't just stop at being a draftsman. You have a lot of potential. I got good grades, I got straight A's and everything at Trade Tech. Um, I was so excited about being, I, I couldn't wait to go to school every day. For me, that was amazing thing, because I hated going to Venice High School. I did go on to SC. I went to night school because in those days, SC was $600 a semester. Today, that would be equivalent to $60,000 a semester. I mean, I, there was no way. I used to make a dollar an hour. $600 a semester was beyond anything. So I went to their extension classes in night school for almost seven years. Before I graduated SC, I was a licensed architect, which was a fantastic thing because it validated me. My first jobs in architecture were not very glamorous. I was an office boy. I, I used to clean the ashtrays in this architectural firm every night because people smoked in those days and my boss was afraid that the place would catch on fire. Um, I put paper towels in the machine. I stored drawings. On occasion, I'd clean the toilet, which was on the second floor because if it got dirty, that somehow the janitors didn't do it. I had, um, I was a, you know, I was an office boy. I ran blueprints. I picked my boss's shirts up from the laundry. Took his, picked up his wife at the airport. Took care of his kids. Um, and it was my entry into architecture. With the experience that I had at LA Trade Tech, I could draw very well. They assigned work to me that was 
pretty serious architecture. September of 1968, which is when I got my license, it's right on the wall behind me. I have to, I have to figure out how many years it took, but it seemed interminable. Because, it, it, as I said earlier, if you want to do, achieve something, you've got to put a lot of energy into it. And I was very, very focused. Nothing would stop me be, from becoming an architect. When I look back on my life and my career, it isn't about money. It isn't about awards. It's about the people I've met, the people that have helped me. I look back at, at the teachers at LA Trade Tech. It's just been a wonderful journey with the associations I've had and, and the life I've been able to lead as a result of the inspiration I've gotten from my friends and colleagues. God bless you.